Newsflash, live action anime adaptations are still terrible, especially when it comes to these performances. This is Ashley with Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 worst anime character portrayals. <laughs> For this list, we'll be looking at the poor representations of anime characters when they made the jump to the silver screen. Whether it's terrible acting chops or totally botching the essence of the character, if the result sucks, it's on the list. As always, you can catch me on Twitter at AshJBo, so head over there, give me a follow, and let me know which anime list you want to see next. Number 10, Emi Rosum as Bulma, Dragon Ball Evolution. Nice move. She's by far the most accomplished actress on this entire list, and has got some killer accolades to her name, but she's still most certainly not Bulma. I'm getting a strong signal from a Dragon Ball only three miles ahead. Try as she might to bring the genius engineer to life, her character in this garbage fire of a film just comes across as eye candy that's apparently also a huge tech geek with a love for shooting things according to all the exposition dumps, all with a distinct lack of her iconic blue hair, might we add. We'll find another way. <laughs> Number 9, Shinji Uchiyama as Gluttony, Full Metal Alchemist. If you're tackling one of the quintessential masterpieces of the anime scene, at the very least, try not to trip over your feet at the starting gate. Say what you will about how the Elrics were handled, the biggest offender for coming across as just plain goofy is this homunculus. His appetites and appearance don't inspire any kind of fear, made all the worse when they try to mesh some terrible looking CGI. A stomach turning into a gaping maw with an evil eye in the middle should never get a meh response. And yet, that's what everyone collectively said as they watched this blob fumble around. Number 8, India Isley as Kite. Kite. First things first, Sam Jackson. Dude, the money cannot have been worth it. Look, Sawa, I want to get these deviants as badly as you do. But I'm looking out for you like your father would have wanted. Second? Wow, what a colossal misstep. Kite as a character is a young girl who forces herself through the sickening world of lowlives in the name of vengeance, consumed by her trauma and constantly reminding us she's one bad day away from falling off the edge. This actress? Dull with an extra shade of dull, along with a sprinkle of gratuitous over-sexualization just for another dig at the original. I remember my parents. I remember that the Amir killed them and that's why I'm on the up. How this flick manages to do all this and yet still feels watered down is somewhat astounding. <laughs> Number 7, Charles Shen as Monkey Boy. Dragon Ball, the magic begins. And to think this isn't the worst live action portrayal of Goku. Not that the star of this Taiwanese adaptation of the Dragon Ball animated film, Curse of the Blood Rubies, it's giving us much to rant and rave about. Granddad, with this magic pole, I can protect you and the pearl from any invaders. <laughs> Good. He's hyperactive and has a tail. That's about it. A performance that holds just as much in common with the credibility of Dragon Ball GT. <laughs> You can't expect much for authenticity when the whole thing has a shoestring budget, but it's still jarring to see Goku brought to life in such a manner. Please give him the pearl, or he'll kill Grandpa, please, sir! Ah! Number 6, Jack Armstrong as Sean Baker, The Giver. Wanna know the reason why this performance pisses us off so much? Because an American version of this gory sci-fi spectacle could have worked. <laughs> We had Mark Hamill, who could have easily played the main role for this schlockfest, get relegated to being the side character for no good reason. It was very strange. He was trying to bring me a, 
mechanical device that Kronos had found, something he called the Giver. So what did we get instead? A US version of Sho Fukamachi who can't act to save his life and drags the whole thing down in the process. I'm sorry. Number 5. Haruma Miura as Eren Yeager, Attack on Titan. Now this is a role you didn't want to mess up. After all, this ball of rage and vengeance is the face of arguably the most popular and impactful anime in modern memory. And what did they do? Messed it up hard. While Eren does have an immature side to him, this live-action version leaned on it so hard, they turned him into such a whiner that he passed into the realm of pathetic. <laughs> Combine that with a dumbass mentality, and this version is as far from the original as you can get. Give this guy one of Levi's special beatdowns. Oh wait, Levi isn't even in the film. <laughs> Number 4. Gary Daniels as Kenshiro, Fist of the North Star. Upon release, this film was already dead. Atrocious acting aside, what makes this take on the Hokuto Shinken user fail so hard is that he can't even pull off the action. The blows look so goofy and cheap, to the point where the fight scenes aren't even cheesy, just sad. <laughs> You know you've failed as Kenshiro when the seven scars on your chest are made from unused condoms. True fact. And you deliver this iconic line with all the gravitas and badassery of a wet fart. Don't turn your back on me! You're already dead. Number 3. Margaret Qualey as Mia Sutton. Death Note. According to director Adam Wingard, the character of Mia was meant to encompass the sociopathic qualities of Kira, acting as one half of a disturbing whole along with Light Turner, aka nothing to do with Misa Amane whatsoever. You don't have to lie to me. Kenny was a sociopath and just because he's dead does not make it a tragedy. Right. I just wish I'd seen it. This complete overhaul might sound unique on paper, but when you realise it's purely to retain Light's sympathetic nature, so instead of a tragic victim caught in a web of obsession and manipulation, we have one crazy psycho who gets high off the thought of killing people for fun. I love you. No, oh, Misa, Misa, you deserved so much better. I'll go get my goddamn book. Number two, Nat Wolf as Light Turner. Death Note. Not that we can put all the blame on the poor bastard, it's just this rehashed American version of such a beloved villain is terribly written. <laughs> Instead of the intellect, hubris, and slow descent into madness we have come to expect from the god of the new world, we're given a guy who screams a lot, makes idiotic mistakes, gets tripped up and outwitted by Mia most of the way, and yet still wins the day because the plot says so. Guess we should apologize to Nia. It's like you said, sometimes you gotta choose the lesser of the two evils. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure to go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Justin Chatwin as Goku, Dragon Ball Evolution. Doing good. <laughs> you all knew it was coming. In what just might be Hollywood's biggest sin against anime, everything in this flick is pretty much the definition of anti-Dragon Ball, with this tailless excuse for a Saiyan standing at the forefront of it all. His performance never really extends beyond generic, stale action star who just repeats the plot over and over and over. Oh, um, uh, well, my grandfather would say beware of the Nemex. This would be terrible in any kind of role, but for Goku, the curious stranger from another world who trained his way into the ultimate shonen powerhouse, yeah, fans weren't having it. And of course, he managed to mess up the Kamehameha too. You bastard.
Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.